Hey folks, David Glenn here from the North Carolina Sports Network with my three quick things on NC State's 67-58 upset of number two seed Marquette in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Tournament, which is sending the pack to its first Elite Eight since 1986. And that's just two weeks after the pack won the, first, the program's first ACC championship since 1987. Unbelievable. Quick thing number one, when you talk about amazing NCAA tournament runs and the context is NC State, you must pay homage from the very beginning to the world-famous Cardiac Pack of 1983. Charismatic coach Jim Valvato led a team that was only 17-10 and 10 at the end of the regular season, sound familiar? to three straight victories to capture the ACC championship, sound familiar, including wins over UNC and Virginia teams ranked in the top five nationally. Then that pack, of course, won six straight in the big bracket to capture the NCAA title, beating four nationally ranked teams along the way, including number one overall nationally Houston in the national championship game, which the Cougars had entered with a 31-2 and sparkling record. To this day, the only national champions that came from a lower seed in the history of the NCAA tournament than that cardiac pack of 1983 were Villanova in 1985 as an eight seed and UConn in 2014 as a seven seed. Although this year's Wolfpack, with just three of the six victories you need to win it all, is only halfway to that promised land, it's important to remember that in several ways, the 2024 pack is an even longer long shot, which perhaps makes them a potentially even more impressive Cinderella, if you will, than that cardiac pack of 1983. Please listen before you accuse me of blasphemy or sacrilege, because I respect the miraculous nature of that cardiac pack, just like everyone else does. First, though, Jim Valvano's club was a number six seed back in 83. That reflects some respect from the NCAA selection committee. Think of number six seed Clemson in this year's NCAA tournament, still standing in the Elite Eight after a bunch of really impressive non-conference victories during the regular season and beating those Tar Heels in Chapel Hill, et cetera. The 2024 Wolfpack, remember, is an 11 seed, which is about as low as you get as a member of a power conference. This pack was not getting into this big dance at all without winning the automatic bid that comes with the ACC championship. Second, the 1983 Wolfpack was playing with a future top 10 NBA draft pick, star forward Thurl Bailey, in their lineup. There is nobody on the 2024 pack who even comes close to fitting that description. Third, the 1983 pack had a point guard who was first team all ACC and went on to become a top 30 NBA draft pick, which nowadays we would call a first rounder. His name was Sidney Lowe. This Wolfpack team doesn't have anybody who fits that description. Although DJ Horn made third team all ACC, there may not be a single NBA draft pick on this entire roster. I bring this up not as a criticism of the 2024 Wolfpack, but to give these young men even more credit, to give Kevin Keats and his staff even more credit, and to emphasize the truly extraordinary nature of what they are doing right now. One of my favorite restaurants in Raleigh for many years now has been The Oak, Scratch Kitchen and Bourbon Bar. It's located on Lake Boone Trail, which is a perfect location for a great meal and beverage if you're on your way to nearby Carter-Finley Stadium or perhaps PNC Arena for a concert, Wolfpack or Hurricanes game, or other event. The menu is incredibly tasty and creative. The atmosphere is a lot of fun. The bourbon options are as high-end and varied as you'll find anywhere. The staff is super classy and first-rate. And I've just always loved the people, the food, and the overall vibe there. When I took Carolina Hurricanes owner Tom Dundon to lunch, yes, meaning the billionaire who owns the hockey team, I took him to the Oak. Seriously, it's that good. Learn more or make a reservation by visiting their website, theoakraleigh.com. That's theoakraleigh.com. Quick thing number two. 
on offense against Marquette, senior forward DJ Burns continued to play like a point forward. And he was absolutely essential to the Wolfpack's win over Marquette, even though he scored only four points. What do I mean? Well, Burns didn't bring the ball up the court, obviously, but he essentially became the team's key distributor, whether he caught the ball out at the three-point line or closer to the lane. He had five assists in the first half, seven for the game, usually passing out of a double team. That's important because it leads to a wide-open teammate so often. In fact, just in the first half, which is basically when the Wolfpack won this game against Marquette. Remember, the pack was up 37-24 at the break. There is more than your margin of victory. In that first half, T.J. Burns hit five different teammates with a pass for an easy bucket. Remember, Casey Morcel got a dunk on one of those. D.J. Horn got an easy, wide-open jumper in the lane on one. Mo Diara got a layup off the glass on one. Jaden Taylor got a wide open three on one and he hit it. Michael O'Connell got a wide open three pointer on a pass from DJ Burns and he hit it too. That's five DJ Burns assists in the first half to five different teammates who hit five easy buckets. Why do I bring this up? Because the Wolfpack won this game in large part because the pack players were loose and confident in the early going. And the Marquette players, other than their star point guard, Tyler Kolick, were playing tight and nervous and looked like they had the weight of the world on their shoulders. Credit to the pack defense, of course. They just held their fifth straight opponent to under 40% from the field. That's part of this Kevin Keats formula that has led to this magical eight-game winning streak. But Marquette, a very good offensive team all season, also took some really dumb shots and missed a lot of shots that it would usually make. The Golden Eagles ended up four for 31 from three-point land, which is about as bad as it gets. Maybe that is also from the weight of being a number two seed and the heavy favorite against an 11 seed. When you give your teammates easy buckets, as DJ Burns did repeatedly soon after the opening tip, It helps those teammates relax. They're not all 60-year college players like DJ Burns is. They haven't been around the block in every case the way DJ Burns has. Those passes, those easy buckets, helped the Wolfpack players relax for when they had to take more difficult shots later. Did you think any of those Marquette players looked relaxed at any point in that game, again, other than Tyler Kolick? I don't think so. DJ Burns' effervescent personality runs rubs off on his teammates in all the right ways, keeping them loose, making things fun. Everybody's always smiling, especially DJ. But I think those sorts of passes, plus the attention he receives, obviously, from opposing defenses with those double teams, I think it all allows him to help his teammates and make their jobs easier in a lot of X and O ways in addition to those personality ways. The Golden Eagles looked nervous against the Wolfpack. While the Pack had some nerve-wracking moments in the second half, they're playing with a free spirit, with a joy, with a confidence that emanates from, in part from their six foot nine, 275-pound ballerina-like big man with an extremely creative, fun-to-watch style of play that you don't see very often, plus that Jimmy V-like charisma that has all come together to become one of the March Madness sensations sweeping the nation. That's DJ Burns of your NC State Wolfpack. In sports, we talk a lot about impact players who make a positive difference. When it comes to our state's economy, the North Carolina pork industry is a true MVP. Each year, the pork industry plays an important role in supporting rural communities across our state. It contributes more than $10 billion a year to the North Carolina economy and supports more than 44,000 jobs. Learn more about their positive impact at ncpork.org. The North Carolina Pork Council, the foundational partner of the North Carolina Sports Network. Quick thing number three, how things unfold in life can be really quirky sometimes. And there is an almost unbelievable full circle story connected to NC State's Sweet 16 victory over Marquette. Almost exactly 13 years ago, at roughly this time of year, only in 2011, 
NC State tried very hard to hire Shaka Smart, who at the time was the head coach at Virginia Commonwealth and one of the hottest young coaches in the entire country. Shaka, of course, now the Marquette coach, had just led at the time VCU as a, get this, number 11 seed all the way to the Final Four, tying the lowest seed ever to make the national semifinals. Obviously, Shaka Smart famously turned down the Wolfpack job back in 2011. 13 years later, here in the Sweet 16 of the 2024 NCAA tournament, the Wolfpack essentially just returned to the favor. I personally covered that 2011 NC State coaching search very closely. I've known Debbie Yao, then the Wolfpack athletic director, conducting the coaching search very well for probably 30 years since she was the AD at Maryland back in the day. I have known Shaka Smart very well for almost 20 years since he was an assistant coach in the ACC at Clemson. I've known the VCU athletic director back in 2011, Norwood Teague, for decades as well. Back in 2011, I was talking to all three of those very important people in that search, among my many other sources, for the articles I was writing and the radio shows I was hosting at the time. And I was doing that before, during, and after that multifaceted, wild, unpredictable Wolfpack coaching search of 2011. After the Wolfpack had fired Sidney Lowe that year, they knocked on the doors of guys like Rick Barnes, a North Carolina native who was the head coach at Texas at the time. There was also Sean Miller, remember, a former NC State assistant coach who was the head coach at Arizona at the time. There was the fiery Greg Marshall, remember, who was building Wichita State at the time after his great success at Winthrop prior to that. There were others who either turned the Wolfpack down or showed no interest in the job, and there were still others I talked to, coaching candidates, who wanted the Wolfpack job but never got an offer from Debbie Yow. Almost exactly 13 years ago, the NC State job was Shaka Smarts if he wanted it. Shaka had always told me privately that he was happy at VCU and that there were only three or four jobs in all the Power Six conferences that really intrigued him while he was the young guy building the Rams program. NC State was not on that short list that intrigued Shaka, but he did tell Debbie Yao that he'd be willing to speak with her if she was willing to wait until after his season was over. Well, Sidney Lowe had been fired long before that, remember? So if you have to wait until Shaka's season is over, as it turned out, you had to wait all the way until the final four. That meant NC State had to wait. That meant Debbie Yao had to wait quite a while in the midst of an intense coaching search. Ultimately, I was the first to report in early April back in 2011, you can still find my tweet, that Shaka said no to Debbie Yao and NC State, and the rest is history. What's peculiar about that history is that the man the Wolfpack actually ended up hiring in 2011 after Shaka and others had turned them down, former Alabama coach Mark Gottfried, who had been out of coaching, remember, for two and a half seasons and was in the broadcast booth after resigning from that Alabama job at midseason. He actually took the Wolfpack to the Sweet 16 twice in his first four years as the Pack's head coach. Shaka Smart, believe it or not, after that Final Four run at VCU in 2011, 13 years ago, did not make it back to the Sweet 16 until, wait for it, this year with Marquette. He didn't make it there again with VCU. He didn't make it there during his six seasons with the Texas Longhorns, and he didn't make it there during his first two years at Marquette. When did he finally make it back? He and his team, of course, were sent home in that instance from the Sweet 16 by, you can't make this stuff up, NC State. Now it's Kevin Keats and the Wolfpack who are going to the program's first Elite Eight since 1986 with a chance to be just the sixth number 11 seed ever to reach the Final Four. Shaka Smart already knows that feeling given his accomplishments at VCU. And now the pack is just one win away from equaling that amazing feat with even bigger things surely in mind. I'm David Glenn. Thanks for joining us on the North Carolina Sports Network. Congratulations to NC State. Please find more of our work at ncsportsnetwork.com.
Sportsgrid.com. This is the moment we waited for. Everything you want is right here. We gon' give them what they came for. We gon' take it up from last year. Shoot them a shot, boy, I'm long range. Me and the team on the same plane. Stay down, never switched up. Only thing changed was the game. I'm in the zone now. Let the cash change what we on now.